Hi, I'm Avi. And I'm Paisley. Welcome to the No Matter Podcast, where our mom and dad will share about our full-time travel adventure. They give awesome tips about the best family vacation destinations, memory-making activities, and how to stay while traveling. They also have really cool guests to answer all your family travel questions. Be sure to follow us at nohomenomatter.com. Thanks for listening. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, Neil Howe, and today my special guest is Stephanie Graves. And she is part of an ordinary, hard-working family who decided one day that they were going to chase their dreams, to have a life full of happiness and memories of rich adventures with their children. And through their engaging social media content and family travel-based blog, they aim to inspire other ordinary families to fulfill their own life of adventure. Their mission is to inspire others to get out and experience the world near or far with their children and live the life of their dreams. Uh, Stephanie Graves, welcome to the No Matter podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. You are welcome. So I'm very interested to hear how you made the decision to, you know, just travel more with your family and really get out there and experience the world. But before we get into that, tell us a little bit about yourself and who your family is. Yes. So my background is as a physician assistant and um, my husband is from a family owned business back in rural Northern Maine here in the States. And within the last year and a half, we made the decision that we wanted to be able to provide the best that life could offer for ourselves and our young family. At that time, our twin daughters were about three and a half years old. So we literally threw a dart on the map and relocated our family and all that we had ever known and moved to the Raleigh, North Carolina area. We have since welcomed our third child, a son, to our family, and we really just aim every day um, in our opportunities around my super busy work schedule to get out and explore the best of the best this upper, this area has to offer um, within driving distance or a short plane ride, and really just educating the locals and other people why this is such a great area, why we chose it. Hmm, that's interesting. So your husband is Ryan? Yes, yes. Um, So my husband, Ryan, and then our children, the girls are Aviana and Adeline, and they will turn five next month. And then Rory is about 16 months old. Excellent. Well, traveling with uh, kids is always an adventure, but, you know, their eyes really open when they see what the world has to offer so many learning experiences. So talk me through this move from you were in Maine, is that correct? Yes. And then you just said, we're leaving, we're going, (laughs) we're going somewhere. And uh, Mm -hmm. you ended up in Raleigh. How did that work? Yeah. um, So we had always traveled quite a bit. So we knew that there was so much more to offer in the world. And our hometown was really small. I like to tell people that the nearest Starbucks was two and a half hours away. So extremely rural. Um, And we wanted to move before the girls started school. So, you know, we Googled best places to raise a family and this area kept popping up. So we came down and visited, instantly fell in love and the rest is history. Um, The climate change was a nice uh, welcome as well. We were looking for something with a little less winter. Um, So we've really been enjoying our time here and exploring, um, as I mentioned, all the local activities. Mm. Well, I'm based in Atlanta. I've been here for 25 years. I'm from Scotland originally, so I understand that cold weather and how it can get to you. Uh, I'd struggle to go back myself, I think, (laughs) uh, used to this hot weather now. What is it that you do that uh, allows you to take off on all these different trips around the the rally area? So my job is a PA. I work three 12-hour shifts. So in between my work week, once the girls are out of school, we generally pack our bags and go somewhere for an extended long weekend, um, generally within an hour to a couple hours drive here. 
or if we're thinking of staying even more local, there's so much here to explore and activities and opportunities happening all the time that we are generally out and about looking for those um, activities to explore and then also share with our followers on, you know, what's happening and, you know, is this something that's worthwhile to take your kids to? And if so, how? Hmm. So there are so many things to do around about your local area and so many people, you know, myself included in and around Atlanta, you know, first of all, it's a big city. There's so much to do. But once you get outside of the city as well, there's just so many opportunities that you you don't necessarily know about, even though that they are within an hour or two of uh, your backyard. So what uh, exciting things have you been to or seen in and around your area? Yeah, and maybe you can relate to this, perhaps being from Scotland. My husband is a huge golf enthusiast. So after Christmas, we went down to Pinehurst, which is um, a really you know world famous golf resort. Mm-hmm. And you would you wouldn't think that going to a golf resort with kids would necessarily be your number one go to for a Christmas vacation. But um, it was really special. And the resort offered so many family friendly um, activities, we can't wait to go back. So we've done that. And then Asheville, Um, In the Blue Ridge Mountains is absolutely beautiful. Ryan and I took a trip there, just the two of us, which was really nice. And then um, we're actually heading to the beach this weekend. We're going down to Myrtle Beach in South Carolina for about five days. My parents are flying down. Great. And, you know, when you have younger kids as well, like you said, before they uh, get to school and when you have a, a job where you're working what, three out of seven days? It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's nice to be able to kind of take off and have a, a, a maybe a, a four-day, five-day trip um, and not really miss any work, right? Right, yeah, it is nice. Um, you know, it's a lot, you know, working three 12-hour shifts, but to know that we have, you know, we're always looking ahead and, you know, what's our next trip? What, where, are we, where are we going to go next? Where we want to explore and share with our followers. So it keeps it really fun and exciting that way. And our kids, um, our little mini jet setters, they love traveling um, and exploring new places mm-hmm. as well. So what was it that, uh, you know, came into your mind that said, you know, we've got to travel more. Uh, what is really important about that for you as well as for your kids? Yeah, I think, you know, it all started actually whenever Ryan and I were driving home from our trip to Asheville, we've always, um, I guess, been self-proclaimed travel agents (laughs) for our own trips and always done extensive research where to stay, come up with exact itineraries, the best places to eat, best things to do. And, we discovered that there just wasn't one good source for all of that information. And since we have traveled a lot and since we do have three kids, we felt that we had a lot of valuable information to share with people and to help them and inspire them and empower them to leave the walls of their house with their kids too, and sharing them what we've learned along the way. Um, And I think more and more as you have more children and a lot of times people can kind of get stuck in the accumulating more stuff rut um, that we're trying to fill our children's childhoods with more experiences versus things. Um, Some of my fondest memories as a child were traveling with my parents. So I want to evoke those same emotions and memories with my own family. Yeah, I think so many people get to that stage in life where, you know, they've they've given their kids all these different things. And, you know, we're lucky enough to be living in America where, you know, that is standard. But, you know, just like you said, those memories that you have of a kid, it's not what you got for uh, Christmas one year or for a birthday. It's the time that you spent together. So I do have that same belief that it really is those experiences and making the most of the time that you have with your kids that is the most important yeah for sure so what uh, have been some of your most memorable experiences on your travels so far 
We have gone to um, Disney quite a few times. My in-laws have a home in Orlando, so we're fortunate to be able to visit there often. And now that we're in North Carolina, it's about a 12-hour drive. So we have actually driven down there um, with three kids. Um, But I would say one of our most memorable experiences was the first time that our girls went to the Magic Kingdom and we did the Cinderella breakfast at Cinderella's castle with all the princesses. Um, They were about three years old. So, and they're still tied up in the whole princess fairy tale magical world. Um, So that was really, really special. Just seeing their faces light up with pure joy when they saw their, you know, these princesses that they admire and look up to so much, see them in real life. Yeah, there's nothing better than seeing that smile on your child's face just when mm-hmm. they're, they're in awe. This, I mean, if you could capture that, uh, <laughs> you know, you could look at it all day. And that's, uh, you know, what what you do with uh, there's so much photography now. And, you know, with people having phones, we are able to capture those memories uh, a lot easier than before. Now, yeah. As, as far as, uh, you know, what you've learned on these travel experiences, uh, are you somebody that prepares a lot beforehand or do you just, you know, pack your bags and go? I definitely put a good amount of preparation in. Um, that being said, we're leaving on Sunday morning and I haven't packed one thing yet. But since we do travel so much, I mean, I pretty much have a standard, you know, list in my head of things that we know that we need to bring and then obviously modify for um, the destination. Um, But I do think that proper preparedness is very important. Um, But also, you know, traveling with kids, there's a lot of unknowns and there's a lot of variables. So I think just knowing that things will not always go as planned, just lowering your expectations to a bit, um, just to kind of go with the flow. Um, but being prepared does help you for those little bumps in the road should they occur. Mm. Now, does that mean that you're a heavy packer and you take everything with you or a light packer and you say you deal with what you have? I'd say somewhere in the middle. I probably pack more for myself heavy because I bring a lot of our food and kind of, um, I don't know, accessories, I guess, or, um, other travel gear. I bring a lot of that because it's easier I find. And I did a piece on our blog recently about how to eat healthy on vacation. Um, I'm a really big health and fitness enthusiast. So I bring a lot of our food and snacks and, um, you know, things like that along the way. It just makes eating easier and cheaper too, um, than having to eat out for every single meal whenever we're away. Yeah, I think that's, you know, we've noticed that ourselves. If we are gone for a few days and you're eating between restaurants and fast foods, you know, it's a sure way to feel lousy and and get sick. It uh, definitely is a lot better if you can uh, take the healthy food with you or even buy it uh, when you're there. Yeah, and then it's always my mission that we come home with the food bag empty. So (laughs) we try to eat it all while we're away. So talk to me a little bit about uh, the blog and uh, what you're doing as far as making this uh, a little bit of a business or trying to get uh, some notice from uh, other people out there because I know hotels and and. Uh, travel brands are always looking for people to share their experiences online. Is that something that you are looking to do? Yes, absolutely. Um, You know, I think that there are so many people out there that sometimes it can kind of, uh, you can kind of get lost or it can be hard to find your voice or your niche per se, but we're just laying it all out there. um, Just trying to be as authentic and honest as possible in our own experiences we are only sharing things that we are 120 percent passionate about we wouldn't um you know post or share something that we didn't completely stand behind so our blog post whether it be of a trip that we had a travel itinerary or a product review or um tips and tricks it's all you know something that we really stand behind and 
are passionate about. So we have a variety of different blog posts that we do. We each destination that we go to, we have a, a travel itinerary of what we did each day. And my husband and I, we both write for the blog. So we do kind of a, a back and forth conversational style for those. And then we also do local pieces on different attractions and activities here in the greater Raleigh area. We have tips and tricks. Um, as I mentioned, for example, one was eating healthy on vacation, how we do that. And then product reviews. And we also have a family um, sidebar as well. Some of our family stories about the individual characters in our family or little things that have happened on our day-to-day life that we find, uh, you know, someone else may find inspiring or get a good laugh out of even. Definitely. Um, uh, like, like I said, before the, the start of the show, I was reading some of your uh, work on your, your blog, which is destinationgraves.com. That's G R A V E S. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's uh, very well written. It uh, kind of pulls you in uh, some funny little things that you say that, uh, you know, made me laugh and smile. But it is all about, you know, sharing you and yourself and and your stories and just that uh, authentic you. Um, You know, what do you think holds people back from, you know, doing more of this themselves and, you know, taking more Uh, family vacations? I think a lack of knowledge and fear that people feel like they need to have all of this fancy equipment or they need to have experience themselves and travel or they, they need to have, you know, X amount of money to go to certain destinations, but really it's, it's not about that. Um, You know, and we try to represent that in our blog and helping people, you know, sharing our pro- our favorite products and also how you can travel with a one-year-old or, for example, how my husband flew with three children all under the age of five alone. Um, so I think it's a combination of both of those things, just overcoming the fears, whether it be their personal experience or not feeling that they have the money to go and spend and have a great family vacation. Um, I mean, some of our best trips have been you know, within an hour of here or have been, you know, really low key that they, they don't have to be this big elaborate, you know, international destinations. I think a lot of times two people get caught up in social media and they see all these other families doing these extravagant things and, you know, kind of play the comparison game. Um, but you know, whatever your adventure is, like I said, in the little intro near or far, um, you know, you can make really incredible family memories. Mm. Yeah, I think one of those uh, major things that uh, hold people back are the expense. Um, you know, how have you been able to kind of handle that? Um, and are there any tips or tricks that you use to make it more affordable? Yeah, so we do have a separate account that we do put a percentage of um, my income to each time I get paid that we use strictly for travel. And then, as I mentioned too, we bring a lot of our food, mainly the breakfast and all of the snacks on our trips. And then any money that we've made also through our blog, we deposit directly into our next trip fund. Um, So actually our upcoming trip um, this weekend, we're doing our first press trip and I'm so excited about it. Um, we're collaborating with the resort that we're staying with. Um, so we'll be providing some really great content on the resort and then also Myrtle beach itself. Um, so that's really exciting. And we obviously hope to do more of those in the future. Excellent. So I'm sure people listening are wondering how that kind of uh, thing comes about. What's the, the process that you went through to make that happen? Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of training and just educating myself on blogging, about reaching out to businesses, about photography. It's it's many different worlds, as you know, the whole blogging realm. Um, but basically, it's just a numbers game, and you know, trial and error. And I reached out to a number 
of tourism boards and other resorts and you know either they weren't accepting new opportunities at that time or the time frame was too short or one of them they actually said you know we require a higher number of followers which i understand um but i reached out to this resort told them of our travel plans what i was thinking of doing a piece on and how i could showcase their resort and you know more or less would a collaboration be of interest i shared um, our media kit and some of our statistics of our blog thus far and our social media and you know they came back and said that they would love to do a collaboration and let them know the dates of our stay and you know there were some other obviously details of what that would entail um and and that was it really so we'll get there on sunday and we'll meet with their um marketing representative and i'll be doing a blog post for them and then obviously some photography and instagram posts and instagram stories so i'm really excited um it'll be work um on vacation but i'm really excited to deliver and just like knock it out of the park our first press trip well, it's always fun to, even though it is work, it's fun to be able to do something that you enjoy and, you know, get rewarded for that. Um, what, yeah. are the, what are the benefits, Stephanie, for the resort by, you know, having somebody like you come in and do that kind of stuff for them? Yeah, I mean, they definitely benefit from us giving a very honest perspective, like I said, you know, we only represent brands that we really stand behind. So giving an honest representation to our followers, you know, why this resort was great, why it's great for kids, the amenities, the, re the restaurants, you know, proximity to the beach, so on and so forth. Um, and sharing it with all of our, you know, blog followers, as well as social media followers. And particularly since we're you know, local ish, it's about four and a half hours away from Myrtle Beach a lot of people in this area are going to Myrtle beach, you know, later this, this spring or summer. So it'll be really valuable information for them. And, you know, moving forward, since it is a larger um, resort chain, I'm anticipating that we can have some sort of collaboration and we can go and explore some of their other resorts and also provide great content and feedback for our followers on those as well. Mm. So what does the future look like for you and your family? Is uh, traveling full-time an option for you? Or are you happy uh, just taking as many trips as you possibly can throughout the year? Yeah, so given my job, um, you know, remote work isn't really an option. Um, I guess it could be if I was more involved with research, but our our short term plan is to continue just traveling as much as we can on the weekends. And then when the girls are on summer break, taking longer trips, you know, two week trips, say back to Maine or New England. Um, and then eventually, you know, being able to travel, um, I guess, more on a full time basis, you know, all goes well and the blog does really well that we can have some more freedom and flexibility with my schedule and with our, uh, you know, real jobs per mm -hmm. se, um, that we can really, you know, explore more of the world. Right. And is that, a there's so much to see in the United States that, you know, you could spend years and years going around the, the States to see all the, the beautiful sites that are here. But do you have that plan to go to the rest of the world as well and, and see, uh, what other countries have to offer? Yeah, we do for sure. I mean, there's a lot of bucket list places um, on my list that are international. Um, Bali and Santorini are like my number two that I so desperately want to visit. Um, and I think as we continue in this blog and travel journey that, you know, our dreams and our goals will change and shift as we advance in this. So it'll be really interesting to see where it takes us, you know, if, if we focus mainly in the States or if we take it to more of an international level and really just trying to see what our readers are most engaged and interested in hearing and, you know, how we can help them. Cause ultimately, you know, we're going on these trips to bring back information to them. So it, um, it's also a really great 
excuse, I guess, to get out and travel more and see more places um, to be able to provide more content for our followers. Mm. And with that content, it is all about these iconic photos. Uh, I'm just, you know, I can picture uh, Bali and Santorini in my head. People just love to see those pictures. So there is a lot of engagement on uh, your website and social uh, accounts as well. Uh, well, Stephanie, what is the best way for people to connect with you? Uh, I know your website is destinationgraves.com. How do they connect with you on social media as well? Yeah, so they can definitely hop over to our website and read more about our family and our adventures and travel tips. They can subscribe to our newsletter there as well. I sent I send it out every Friday. I just sent one out today. Um, just kind of recapping the week. And I also give some like insider tips and then what's on the horizon. And then they can follow us on Instagram at destination graves. And on Facebook, um, my personal profile is, is Stephanie graves. And then we have a private um, Facebook group or excuse me, no, it's a Facebook page, Destination Graves, which they can join and, and follow along as well. So people can contact us through either of the social media platforms or on the blog, subscribing to the newsletter. They can email us and contact us directly at info at destinationgraves.com. Well, excellent. I know a lot of people are going to jump on that and uh, follow your journey. Even if they can't make it away themselves, they love to see those pictures and live vicariously through somebody else. Uh, so uh, yeah. make sure you go check that out, uh, destinationgraves.com, and I'm sure you'll get all the social links there as well. Uh, Stephanie, if there's a, a final message that you would like to leave with our listeners, uh, what might that be? Um, I, I would say that the final message is just to get out there and to chase your dreams and to fill your life with the things and the people that make you happy and to really just get out there and experience the world because there is so much to see and experience um, and life is too short not to chase your dreams and get out there and get after it. That's right. Uh, we just don't know how much time that we have left, so we don't want to be wasting it doing stuff that we don't enjoy. It's a, a great message right there. All right, Stephanie, well, I ask everybody this question. Uh, what is your favorite book and why? Uh, I'm not a huge reader, I will say that. Um, I do more podcasts and YouTube um, whenever I'm doing any reading or education or personal development. Um, but I did have my own business previously and there was this book, um, get over your damn self. Mm -hmm. And it was related, um, a little bit to the business that I was in, but the underlying message was basically to, you know, break through your personal bearers and get out of your own head and take action. So I thought it was a really powerful book and for lack of a better term, you know, get over your damn self. Um, and I, I found it really liberating to, you know, her message. So it's a great book for anyone in any field and it will definitely inspire you to take action. Yep. And that's what it's all about. You know, people, uh, you, you have to get your mindset right. People will sit in the same place for years and years and years wishing that they could travel more instead of, like you said, taking action and finding a way, putting the money away like you do uh, to a special travel budget and, uh, you know, finding the things that are going to make it more economical and possible. So, uh, yeah, you never know unless you try. So. Mm. All right. Well, Stephanie Graves, uh, it's been great talking to you today. Uh, I hope you have fun on your travels. Uh, people will make sure you, that you connect with Stephanie and the Graves family at destinationgraves.com. Uh, Stephanie, thanks very much for being my guest on the No Matter podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. All right. And to our listening audience, if you like what you hear, hit that like button and share, and we'll see you next time on the show. Thanks for listening to the No Matter Podcast. For more shows and resources, visit us at nohomenomatter.com and make sure to follow and subscribe.